Okay, so welcome, and I am so excited to have Ken Shevelday off here to join us to talk about education. So welcome, Ken, and uh, yeah, thank you for joining us today. Well, welcome. Uh, thank you very much for having me. I, I've uh, been looking forward to this for uh, quite some time. I'm, I'm very passionate about education, so I'm, I'm really excited about uh, interacting with, uh, with your viewers and, uh, and listening to the questions and having a chance to, to answer them. Yeah. So Ken's already ready. He's ready to uh, start answering yours. So keep them coming. Down below, you'll be able to post your comments, and uh, we'll try to get to as many as we possibly can. Hit the like button and share this as well so we can get more people on this live video. Uh, before that, I want to do a quick disclaimer. My name is Adam Hicks, and I'm a uh, trustee on the Regina School Board. I, I want to say, too, these views expressed in here are my own and not those of, of our board. But I, again, I am so excited. And with Ken joining us, I've done a little bit of research. And uh, I found out a few things I did not know about you before this. So you're, you're currently in Saskatoon, and uh, you, went to, you went to three different schools getting your, your advanced education. So the U of S, you were in Ottawa, and even Southern California. So that, that's a, it's a wide, wide range of experience. In, in yeah, I've actually had a, a really interesting uh, school career. I, I went to Carleton because I won a scholarship to be a page in the House of Commons. So that was a wonderful... <laughs> I, you know, I could go on and on about the experiences I had there, you know, met Margaret Thatcher, met Ronald Reagan and uh, things like that. Uh, then wanted to come back to the U of S, play some football, Husky football. And uh, then when I got a little more serious later on in my career, uh, looking at, uh, you know, where to finish off my MBA and, and looking at job prospects and things like that, uh, I was able to start it at the U of S and then finish it uh, down south. Yeah. yeah, that's really neat. I had no idea. Uh, lots of people know, though, you were ele you've been elected since 2003, so you're a long-serving uh, MLA in the Saskatoon Silver Springs, which is now called Saskatoon Willow Grove. And uh, Yeah, that, that's correct. I, I live in the um, northeast part of Saskatoon, where a lot of the growth has taken place in the yeah. city, and a new seat was created in 2003. I was running my own business. Uh, uh, we just started a family, and... Uh, and uh, the opportunity came up, so I thought, uh, what a great opportunity to be able to serve the people of Saskatchewan through entering provincial politics. Yeah. And that's impressive. That's, a long, that's a, a long career in politics. And so during that time, uh, I, had, I had so many notes on here. So you've been the Minister of uh, the Crown Corps, Minister of Enterprise, Minister Responsible for Sask Energy, uh, Minister of First Nations and Métis Relations, of Environment, Parks, Culture and Sport, the public service, the list goes on and on. <laughs> I've, had, a, I've had a great career. In 2003, we were in opposition, so I was the finance critic, and I, I had a real opportunity to learn about everything from an opposition point of view. But the real excitement came in 2007 when I became a cabinet minister. Yeah, and I've had a solid decade uh, of uh, experience as a cabinet minister, and I, I think that's just the right amount of experience to... Uh, uh, look forward to the next job, uh, Premier of Saskatchewan, if people so choose. Yeah. So that's pretty exciting. You have a chance right now to ask your questions live to a, a future Premier. So let's get into uh, our prepared questions. So this first prepared one, and, and Ken has seen some of these other videos, so he's ready for that my son, but he doesn't know what the question is yet. So it, this question comes from uh, a young grades, or a, a grade two student. So let's see what uh, Corbin has to ask. Oh, I messed up. So as you're looking at this right now, I, uh, I, I'm sorry. This is uh, what, the, what you're seeing right now is my background and research on Ken's Facebook page. So what I got out of Ken's Facebook page is you are familiar with these live videos. So what, sorry about that mix up, by the way. My son's question is coming next. But yeah, I can't believe how many live videos you've done. And I was impressed. They're all over the province. And I, it, it, as you saw in some of those screenshots there. But so you're, you're not afraid of live, live interviews. Well, we've worked really hard to get around the province. And, and we started early by doing uh, little video clips. And then I, I started hearing back from people that they really, you know, they, they enjoy the written context, but they enjoy the videos more. So yeah. as we were in uh, East End, Saskatchewan, visiting <laughs> Scotty, uh, we thought we would say hi to the province and Pontex and, uh, 
and just the, the many, many communities. Uh, I've got over 30,000 uh, kilometers on my vehicle yeah. and uh, we get in an oil change every week, but it's so important because those are the people that are gonna elect. You know, I always say it's not about the establishment, it's not about endorsements, it's about the grassroots voters. And I, I went to see as many as I could yeah. in their home communities. Well, even you, uh, I watched one of your first uh, Facebook Live videos and I think it was in the same room. I recognize the background, <laughs> but you were taking live questions too, which uh, I, I appreciate. And I appreciate that openness. So, Well, you know, I, I take advice well from people and they said, you know, Facebook Live is where it's at. You, you have to do it. And uh, when I uh, looked at the number of people that watched it, you know, thousands of, of people, yeah. uh, you know, it, it's hard to, to, to get around the province and to visit each and every community. But if you can link with people uh, through Facebook Live, uh, it, it works very well. And, you know, then I was in Gull Lake a couple days after and they said, yeah, I watched your Facebook Live. And uh, <laughs> so, cool. so, uh, so I'm, I'm an adopter. I, I, I feel that uh, uh, whatever the technology can do, and, and it's got applications for education as well, uh, the technology. Totally agree. And that's, that's why we're here today, to talk about education. So, okay, I'm sorry about that. Now we have the question from, uh, from Corbin. So we should be able to see it right away here. Hi, my name is Corbin Hicks. I'm in grade two, and I go to Massey School. My question is, what time is lunch? So it's getting to be lunchtime. And yeah, well, <laughs> if Corbin's like me, then uh, lunchtime always uh, I wanted to come a little earlier. But uh, when I was in school, it always came at uh, at, at twelve o'clock, and uh, I was always ready for it. That's for sure. You'd have a good <laughs> recess in the morning, and you'd build up that appetite and. Uh, it looks like uh, Corbin's a, a, an active uh, student there, so I'm sure he gets hungry for lunch uh, early as well. <laughs> Mom yeah. and Dad would probably know that well. True enough. Mom's behind the screen right now, so uh, she's, she, oh, she's not reacting to that one. Okay, so we have uh, our first prepared question, uh, more serious. This comes from uh, Ali, who is an education student at the University of Regina, right here in, in Regina here. And I'm just wondering what your vision for the K-12 education is here in Saskatchewan. Well, thanks for the question. And, and my vision for K-12 education in Saskatchewan is to be the very best that it can be, not only in the country, but in the world. And um, I think that we have that opportunity because we're so blessed with uh, uh, what we have in Saskatchewan, wonderful teachers, wonderful school boards, and, and our education system can, can be the best. You know, of course we're limited with resources and, and dollars, but our government makes it a real priority. And that's why we want to grow the economy so we have more resources for he education, healthcare, and social services. And whenever I'm, I, I have the opportunity, and, and most years I do make it the Saskatoon Teachers Association, they invite me out to hear hear uh, one of their worldwide speakers, you know, that that's, uh, Sir Kenneth Robinson and, uh, and, and others uh, were there and I had a chance to, to hear from them all about the world-class education, how we can be very best in the world and I'm sitting there saying, hey, we can do that in Saskatchewan and I think the teachers that are, are there listening uh, at, at, to those presentations feel that way too. Cool, well, I appreciate that that's, and that was a, that was a lot of teachers in that room this year and that's, that was Great that you were able to attend and, and yeah. answer some of that. Well, stuff. people like Pazzy Solberg uh, came, you know, from uh, from Europe and, and and talked about leading edge technologies, and yeah. uh, that, that's the kind of guy I am. I'm, I'm wanting to see best practices in the country, but also what's hat leading edge in the world. And cool. So you hear it. So if you want to ask your question to Ken, uh, put them in the comments below. We'll try to get some as we go along here. So we're going to go to uh, a second prepared question. This one is coming from, uh, actually it's from a chair of our local community schools, uh, and she, Jill, Jill is her name, and Jill has a question for Ken. The population of Saskatchewan is different today than it was even a few years ago, and we'll continue to see it change in the years ahead. Demographically, what challenges do you anticipate for the K-12 education sector? What about economic challenges, and what opportunities do you see? Okay. Well, you know, certainly uh, we, we, we have um, some challenges uh, uh, with the demographics in Saskatchewan, but I think they're very good challenges. You know, when I was first elected in, in 03, uh, you know, we were closing schools and losing population, and, and those were very serious concerns. And, now, you know, fast forward to 2017, in the last 10 years, our population has grown. Uh, we were teetering on a million people when we were first yeah. elected government. Now we're, 
We're almost 1.2 million people. We have uh, you know 800 more teachers uh, now than than before. So uh, the possibilities are there. But with that comes a change in demographics, of course. Uh, we have people that are moving to Saskatchewan from across the country and around the world, and that that does pose some some challenges. You know, we have to uh, make sure that we're able to uh, address those those cultural needs and and the adaptation of people moving to our province, and and a lot of that. Uh, you know, rests on the shoulders of, of teachers. I, I know that they're working very hard to, uh, to adapt and, and, and have that inclusion model to ensure that each and every child feels like they're, they're included in, in everyday activities and all of the learning aspects. But I know that that does put some stress on, on teachers and the, and the school board system. But, you know, that's all the reason that, that government and teachers and school boards and parents have to work together to make sure that that experience is the best possible. Yeah. And that's the demographics have like it's growth is now the issue, and that's it's not an issue. It's it is an issue, but it's it's a uh, well. You know, my daughter is in, in grade twelve now at St. Joseph in Saskatoon. But uh, as I you know followed her uh, her high school uh, career and you know, I go into the schools and I see them proudly display ninety flags from around the world <laughs> representing 90. where students come from in 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 that one. A one school and I, I just think that's that's amazing you know our our motto in Saskatchewan is from many people's strength and it's not just a motto it's about uh, those cultures and I was a minister of culture uh, prior to August 28th before I uh, resigned to to pursue this uh, opportunity but uh, I got to know like the, the cultures of the province yeah. and, and education is so important to each of those cultures uh, I was just with the Korean Association on the weekend and and they they're entrepreneurial they work hard but to what end? So their kids could have the very best education possible. It's important to understand that too. So how best can the legislature represent those views and, and represent those demographics? That's absolutely. Yeah. You bet. Okay. okay, thanks for sharing, Ken. Uh, we're going to go to. It looks like we have some prepared question or some uh, questions from the audience. We'll get to right after this one. Uh, but we're going to go to another prepared one. It's coming from actually, it's a grade twelve student. Jack is his name. Uh, Jack, let's see what your question is. Is, do you believe that stable and predictable funding to the K-12 education sector could help increase graduation rates and reduce the achievement gap between Indigenous and non-Indigenous students? Why or why not? Thanks, Jack. Well, thanks, Jack, and you're grade 12 students, so I'm used to grade 12 student questions because my daughter <laughs> Paige is in grade 12 and uh, I get them uh, whenever I am home on, on, the, on the weekend. And, uh, yeah, stable and predictable funding, of course, you know, that's uh, what allows school boards uh, to, to deliver the best education possible. And when I was first elected um, in, in 03 and then uh, on to 07, there was a, a budget of about $964 million for education in the province. Now it's over $2 billion. So uh, certainly that stable uh, funding and increasing funding has happened uh, each and every year. You know, this last budget was a bit of a tough one. We had to take a step back and there were some reductions, but I think most importantly, what we have to do is, is look to the future. And I see another 10 years of growth happening uh, in our province and with that, increased funding for healthcare, education and, and social services. And I, I think that stable and increasing funding is, is so important. So we have the resources. You know, when I talk to teachers, the, the number one thing they talk about is respect. They want respect from the provincial government, from their politicians, and I certainly try to do that uh, every day. The second area is resources for the classroom and, and having that, that funding available, and that's so important. And I think the second part of the question was about uh, you know, graduation rates and Indigenous students and, and things like that. And I know that that's a top priority for uh, the Ministry of Education and for the Minister of Education and, and for people around the province. I, I traveled up to, to Pine House not too long ago and talked to the principals of uh, the schools and the teachers up there. And, you know, they're very proud of, of the, uh, of the um, you know, way things are going and the achievements that, that they're making uh, in graduation rates. And sometimes it's taking a little bit longer and, and, and you know, to, to have the, the four and five year uh, graduation rates. Uh, but uh, at the end of the day, uh, I think we're making some improvements. And when I, I talk to the uh, both school board chairs in Saskatoon, uh, whenever I, I speak to them, they, they talk about, uh, you know, the achievements that they've made, especially on, on, on the Aboriginal gra graduation rates. So much more work to do, but I, I think we're, uh, we're recognizing it, that it's a top priority, and we are making some advances. 
And I think recognizing it, it's, it, that is one of the first steps, is that we all recognize it is it can be better, and it, it has to be better. But Yeah, absolutely. And then it goes on to, uh, you know, have record uh, uh, numbers of uh, Indigenous uh, students uh, entering our post-secondary education, and then record numbers of graduates. And to me, it's, you know, education is, is the, uh, um, the way we solve many of our social problems. And then when we see role models, like I see more and more all the time graduating, uh, from university, being involved in sports and quality of life okay. issues. I'm, I'm so excited about that because I think that bodes so well for the next generation in our province. Cool. Actually, I'm going to go back to the, one of the, the first part you answered. You mentioned respect uh, and, and funding. Mm -hmm. Do you believe those relate to each other? I'm kind of curious. Well, you know, I, I think respect is, a, is an interaction. It's a, it's a value and, and it's how, you, how we treat each other. Okay. And, uh, you know, that's something that, that, that I try to do with, uh, you know, people that work with me, people that we meet with me as a, as a minister, and, you know, whether you're a stakeholder or, or not. And, you know, what I find is, is uh, teachers and educators and school board trustees, they're so passionate about things. And, and, and I see that as a, as a real positive. And uh, I think there's, there's real opportunities. I think, you know, there's been some ebbs and flows and, and all of that. But, uh, you know, we've done a really good job as a government in, in um, building new schools and providing the atmosphere and all that. And I think the next job now is having that reconnection with teachers, parents, and, and politicians. I think you hit on it too, and I think that's what in the field we recognize too, is that, that relationship piece is important. So yeah, thanks for recognizing that. Okay, so we have a, a question here from Trista. So thanks Trista for your question. Keep them coming too, we'll try to get to more of these. Uh, Trista wants to know, what is your plan to support students with intensive needs? Well, again, uh, I, I think that uh, you know it's so important to to recognize each and every student in in the classroom and and try to uh, as much as you can specialize into uh, uh, the way they learn and the needs that that they have. So uh, you know, recognizing certain limitations uh, within the the school system, I, teachers I know uh, work very very hard to recognize those special needs, and I think you know from a government perspective providing that funding for the school boards so the school boards can recognize uh, what special needs uh, um, have to be addressed. And, and uh, I know the school board uh, trustees that I talk to are certainly uh, very focused on that. And it tends to sometimes uh, gravitate to the urban areas uh, and, you know, as those special needs are, are needed to, to look after. But uh, again, I think it's, it's the partnership. Um, you know, more resources are always coming into play so we can have that very best learning for them and I think the use of technology as we started out talking about is so important because um, to me that's how we can um, really adapt the, to the special needs of, of the individuals. Cool. Well Ken you hit, you hit on something that no other candidate hit on yet in that and, and that's so Trista thanks for the question this is a this is a really good one. Um, two parts to it though is, is students typically have more support in the urban areas just due to the size and, and the funding piece to it so there is a bit of that flow from the rural areas to, to the urban areas. But then right now how it works, Trista, uh, funding comes from the province, but school boards are the ones that allocate those funds to special needs and, and, and to uh, intensive, intensive needs for students. So. Yeah, no, if you talk to school boards in the, in the cities, you know, that's what they'll talk about, those intensive needs. And uh, in the rural area, they have challenges as well, you know, uh, trying to... Uh, um, you know, transportation concerns and isolation okay. concerns and, and, and things like that. So that's why we, uh, you know, try to be as fair to each and every, uh, every school board uh, possible, but recognizing that, uh, you know, they gravitate uh, for special needs, whether it's health care or education, towards yeah. our, our larger cities. And it's hard. We have a diverse province. That's and, right. Yeah. And size and location. So, okay, thanks. Thanks for the question, Trista. We really appreciate yeah, that. Great job. Uh, okay, this next one comes from, this is a prepared question from a grade two teacher in our system, uh, Jason. So let's hear what Jason's question is. And my question is, the Saskatchewan K-12 education sector relies on partnerships. The SSBA, the STF, teacher associations, education sector labor groups, and the professional gov uh, provincial government. Do you believe any changes are necessary to this model? Would you do anything to enhance these partnerships? Yeah, Jason, we were just, partnerships are, are important. So thanks for the question, Jason. 
Well, you know, one thing that I've learned in my 10 years of experience as a cabinet minister and elected person, it's, it's all about those partnerships. And, and in education, we're so fortunate to have, you know, the School Boards Association, the School Trustees Association, the, the, the Saskatoon Teachers Association, the, the STF. And I'm very proud that every um, request of me to, to appear uh, before the group or, or to interact with them that I have accepted it and uh, okay. you know Gord Wyant and I I think are, are the only candidates that were able to uh, you know appear before the Saskatoon Teachers Association it was thousands of teachers and uh, you know they said we're gonna challenge you guys and I think as the next premier if, if you want to be the premier you have to take those challenging meetings you have to show up you have to listen to those questions uh, wholeheartedly but at the end of that you talk about being partners and that's what, what that's what we did with the uh, with the Saskatoon Teachers Association where pe teachers came from around the province and, and and you know we debated a little bit and I had a chance to talk about my vision but at the end of it we talked about partnerships and and partnerships mean that you want the same goal at the end of things and I think that's uh, you know every politician that, that I've met every teacher that I've met that's what they want is that that goal for the very best education in our province that that uh, that we can have you know recognizing that there's some funding uh, um, you know challenges a, a, as well yeah I appreciate that and you're not afraid of those those hard questions so th another quick fact there he's not even there were thousands of teachers I wasn't <laughs> there but there was that that place was packed and one quick fact I, I know about Regina from from being from here I heard a fact that 12% of citizens in Regina go to a Regina public school or a, a school in, in uh, so they either work in the schools or they attend a school and it's 12% of our population are in those so education is extremely important and it affects a, a massive amount of people in, in this city and, and other cities as well. Well you know for example when they have that in downtown Saskatoon you know I heard <laughs> first thing I heard parking. when I worked up in the uh, <laughs> you better get your parking spots early the teachers are meeting downtown and uh, and, yeah, and you know, there's a, there's a, a passion and an excitement and an enthusiasm. And like I mentioned before, they have the opportunity to hear. Sometimes they bring in some of the world's best educators and to talk about, you know, something that that's happening someplace else and to challenge everybody yeah. uh, as well. And and I feel and you know, I go whether it's an election year or not. Uh, you know, I've been invited. Uh, um, each and every year and whenever I can make it I, I get something out of it and then I, I hear from teachers that I run into that uh, you know that's part of that respect hey, I respect that you've taken the time to spend half a day with us yeah. you know sort of walking in, in our shoes a little bit yeah no, I appreciate that okay so I had uh, I did some more research on your website and some of the platform stuff uh, you mentioned in some of your materials committee of the child so I'm talking I'm thinking about partnerships and what can you explain that a little bit more? Because I'm curious to, to, uh, to, to hear a little bit more about that. Well, absolutely. Well, it, first of all, it starts with something that, that uh, I uh, committed to at the, at the beginning of this campaign, and it was a listening forum where you know, other uh, people and candidates talk about, well, they're going to consult after they become premier. I thought it was important to do it during the, the campaign. And uh, so we had a, a one-day session where we just asked um, educators from uh, teachers and school board people uh, past and present to come and spend a day with us and we called it a listening forum and I invited my other leadership candidates to, to come as well and uh, and MLAs to come and many MLAs uh, did did come and listen firsthand and what we heard about it is that we we need to have the integration of the different ministries that are that are responsible for funding children in, in Saskatchewan so my idea it was a, a cabinet committee of the child. I didn't want to go right into a ministry, another creating another yeah. ministry, but I wanted to bring together the ministers of, of health and the ministers of social services and justice and education together to be a, that's the highest level that we can have was a you know a cabinet committee other than cabinet itself and and with them bring their funding uh, partners uh, or their funding budgets as well. You know, School Plus was something that happened uh, a while ago in the province, and, and I still hear teachers talk about it as, as something very positive, but it didn't have the funding mechanisms behind it to continue it on. So I would see that the uh, Cabinet Committee of the Child would uh, take off where, where School Plus uh, uh, left off and, and really bring the integration together. And that's something that I heard directly from, from teachers uh, 
Uh, you know, so, but I am really getting a lot of support for that idea from, from around the province. Well, that event too, I, uh, I got a text from one of your colleagues about why am I not here? And, and uh, <laughs> so I, I, I wasn't able to make it, but I yeah. appreciate that, that, that organization and that ability to bring different stakeholders. And there, there were a lot of different stakeholders yeah. in that room. I so. think the fact that I took a step back from the politics of it, like when we did small business and entrepreneurship, Tina Baudry Miller, to her credit, came and, and participated in that session. So, cool. you know, it is about parking the partisanism yeah. at the door and having one day where we just hear from, from awesome. the experts. And yeah. I, yeah, that's, that's great to hear. That's yeah. really great to hear. Well, one of the people that showed up, uh, she said, oh, hey, I, I helped write the curriculum for, for grade 12 uh, <laughs> right. physics. And, uh, and, you know, to hear um, from her perspective of having cha being challenged to write the curriculum and then that's, deliver the curriculum. That's pretty cool. It's something that you just don't get every day. Yeah. And those and, are good connections to have. Too. Oh, absolutely. Okay, thanks, Ken. So, uh, that was good. Good, good. Uh, sorry, that was a long one, too, but that's good. <laughs> Uh, okay, so this next one is a prepared question that comes from Bailey. Bailey is another U of R student in the education program. And I was just wondering what aspects of the K-12 education program that you're proud of and what, challenge, or what aspects do you find challenging? Well, I'm, I'm very proud of um, how K-12 education is really integrated into the community. How, how students are, I think, more aware than ever about what's happening in the community, the needs and the challenges. And, and you know, I see my, my daughter going out and volunteering, uh, uh, for example, in, in, in different, uh, uh, you know, different areas that, that uh, are needed in, in, the, uh, in the city and in the province. So I'm, I'm very, very proud of uh, the K-12 system. Um, the principals and the teachers and how they encourage uh, students to become aware of their community and how they can make their community uh, a better place. You know, challenges, of course, it's always challenging on, on, on resources. And, and uh, you know, like I said before, in the time that I've been in government, the resources given to, to education have doubled. And, and I believe in the, in the context of that it's an investment uh, for sure. And I want to see that, that continue to happen. But there always are limitations. And, and uh, you know, to me, that's, uh, that's somewhat frustrating. But uh, as a cabinet minister for 10 years, you see the competing interests as well. You know, health care and social services and justice and, and, and highways and, and, and other areas are, are, are very uh, much competing for those limited resources. And that's why I'm, I'm really focused on, on balancing our budget and growing our economy for the future. And uh, I think that's the way we get another 10 years of growth and that we're able to see you know, many more hundreds of teachers and hired and, 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 uh, and those specialized uh, ways of teaching to those special needs students uh, uh, as well. Cool, I appreciate that. And I, I can't even imagine some of those decisions and how there's probably not a, a bad business case out of any ministry. They're all, they're all positive, they all produce some type of economic value and it, it would be hard. But yeah. they, They're all good choices that, that come to you, but you just have to, uh, have to prioritize uh, some time. But one area that I think uh, you know, we can really do a better job is when, when, it, when we talk about uh, mental health and addictions oh, yeah. and students. And, um, you know, it, it can be uh, you know, very, very expensive very quickly if you're building new buildings. And, you know, my idea is to partner with one of the best um, uh, organizations in North America called ARC, uh, the Alberta Adolescent uh, uh, Recovery Center. And uh, right now, parents send some of their students there without any government help. I think it's an area of, and we talked about partnerships, it's a partnership that can be created for students that are falling through the cracks and those that are in very serious need of, of the very best treatment for, for addictions and mental health concerns. Well, and we talk about a, uh, a trustee from Sandy Bay, uh, Harry is his name. He's been passing me some information. It's, it's, we have to keep talking about that because it, there is, I'm glad you mentioned mental health. That is a serious issue across our province, not just in the north, but it's, uh, it, it's something that we need our next premier to, potential premier to, to have on the top of mind. So. Again, when I was visiting northern Saskatchewan during the campaign, I talked to some of the mental health workers up there. They talked to me about 206 sessions, one hour sessions, uh, you know, just to, to give a, you know, and I think we're doing a good job of taking the, the stigma away from mental health, but the other side of that is we have to be able to, uh, to address the needs, and I think this is an area where, uh, 
you know, we have to focus, and, and yes, there will have to be larger percentages of budgets, but we can make those dollars go a longer way by, by establishing those partnerships. And I think whether it's outside the province or inside the province, uh, there's much work yeah. to do. Well, health, social services, all education, all of us working together, I think we can accomplish a lot. And I Absolutely. I truly believe that. Okay, so we, we've done a little fun part because I, I believe uh, it's important for us to be able to have a, a, a fun chat with our, our a potential future premier. So for Ken, I heard and I did a little bit of research that hockey is something, and I'm hoping I picked the right topic here. Oh, absolutely, but, okay. absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but hockey is, uh, is something. So I have, a, I have a bit of a quiz and uh, there's no prize. There will be uh, bragging rights in the, in the ledge, I guess, so oh, okay. will be about it. So, okay, I got uh, five questions for you. Uh-oh. Uh, so I want to know, this, this will be the easiest one I think, the official national winter sport of Canada. Oh, and I kind of gave it away already. <laughs> hockey. Yeah, it's hockey. I wasn't going to mention hockey. Uh, I messed up on my own notes. Yeah. Okay, Although I'll, I'm becoming a real lacrosse fan as lacrosse well with the sense. Saskatchewan, Russian, Saskatoon. Uh, they have done Season an incredible tickets job. Have gone through that. Yeah. That's you know, and when I'm door knocking, I see, uh, you know, of course, kids playing hockey, on, uh, playing shinny on the street. But now I'm seeing them... Uh, Play a little lacrosse, lacrosse as well, you. and uh, I think that's great. That is pretty cool. Okay, this one's going to be a little tricky. The Stanley Cup was first uh, awarded to recognize the Canadian Amateur Championship, and later it's the trophy, obviously, of the NHL. What year was it first issued or awarded, I guess? Mm, 1917. Oh, Maybe that's the NHL one, but oh. 1893. When I was looking up these stats, I couldn't believe it was... Oh, 1893. 1893, wow. and it continued on. Then it went to the NHL. Oh, okay, that, yeah. Well, that's... Uh, yeah, that's... Uh, it's old. That's a long... That's a long, long time ago. Yeah. You bet. Okay. I want to know if you... Okay, this question is, who is the former four-time champion, league champion with the Brandon Wheat Kings and possibly the GM, the general manager of the Winnipeg Jets? Well, would that be my brother Kevin Sheveldayoff? <laughs> <laughs> I did not know this before. I, I figured that would be an easy one. Yeah, but, well, I uh, thought the Jets would come in there somehow, <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, the, the one thing that I'm not able to do enough of is uh, during this campaign is watch the Winnipeg Jets, and they're doing very well this year. But, uh, no, in all seriousness, I'm, I'm very uh, I'm proud of my brother, and uh, it just proves to show that, uh, you know, growing up in Blaine Lake, Saskatchewan, our parents taught us that, you can do anything that you yeah. you want to do, and uh, I'm very proud of him. That's pretty cool. I I had no idea before, so that was that was a nice little piece of research. Okay, two last questions. The oldest uh, major junior hockey franchise that is hosted in the same location and same name is the Regina Pats. Oh, you got that one. Nice. I I, I had a little bit of uh, in on that because I. Uh, I was Minister of Parks, Culture and Sport and, and I accompanied the Pats when we went to Toronto to oh. uh, make the bid for the for the Memorial Cup which is coming to Regina I, here. We were, of yeah. course we were... So you were part of that team? That, I was part of it, ah, uh, you know, with Sean Semple and yeah. Anthony Marquart and uh, and I think they're just killing it. This is going to be, uh, you know, the, uh, the Eagles coming for a concert to yeah. kick off the Memorial Cup. Uh, it's just going to be wonderful. So and get game, your tickets. The game in Mosaic Stadium too. They're flooding oh. though. They're flooding all of Mosaic Stadium, <laughs> and there'll be a hockey game down in. Uh, well, I had a chance last year to go to the outdoor game where the Oilers played the Jets yeah. in, in Winnipeg, and it was just phenomenal. Cool. And uh, in in you know true Saskatchewan fashion, they say anything they can do in Winnipeg, we can do, and maybe even a little <laughs> better. So uh, they set the bar pretty high, but uh, I'm so excited that the Memorial Cup's yeah. coming to Saskatchewan. It'll be nice. It'll be cool. Okay, this last one, this might be a little tricky, but maybe, okay, so what year, the Pats, what year did they officially start? Well, it's, the, it's their 100th anniversary, so uh, 1918. Oh. Or 1917. 17. Yeah, okay. That was, we'll give, we'll give that point to Ken. That was close. That's, yeah, 1917, 100 years for, uh, for the Regina Pats. So. That's amazing. And, of course, the, the Pats are for the uh, Princess Patricia's Light Infantry. And, and when we talk about Memorial Cup, it's all about... Uh, recognizing those who have served and the, I went to the Memorial Cup this year in, in Windsor as part with part of the Pats organization and just the the, the real uh, sentiment that they have to those that have served and it, it really is a, a memorial to, to them. I, I, yeah, thanks for sharing. Okay, so it's, it's, fun, it's fun to be able to, to have a little fun in this stuff. So. Absolutely. Okay, so let's get back. We have a couple last prepared questions. We'll try to get to some more. It looks like we have some more notes from uh, comments from you, so keep, keep those comments coming. We'll try to get to a few more. 
This question comes from a grade nine student. Her name is Alex, and uh, let's hear what Alex's question is. My question for you is, what other ideas do you have about helping the K-12 education sector achieve the best results for all Saskatchewan students, including myself? Okay, thanks, Alex. Well, my ideas for, you know, of course, I, I want to be at the leading edge. I want to be able to use technology and to, to have the very best uh, uh, K to 12 system that we can, but maybe we can learn from from others around the world. And I, you know, in my my um, kids, when I talk to them, they're very passionate about exchanges and 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 learning from uh, other uh, students and, and traveling as well. So, you know, I think if we could do a, a little bit more of that, you know, bring in whether it's uh, teachers or or students from from other parts of the world, and and sometimes you recognize. Uh, you know how good we have it in Saskatchewan and then you, you recognize some things that we could be doing better uh, as well so that's a little thing I think uh, you know um, having more of those twinning programs and, and bringing uh, educators in and then maybe allowing some of our very best to, to go out and to tell the world about what uh, education is like in Saskatchewan I think we're the worst at being our own cheerleaders that's the, the <laughs> you know for so many years we were like that and now it, it's okay to brag a little bit and to yeah. say hey uh, I'm very proud to be, uh, you know, from Saskatchewan, from small town or from city Saskatchewan, and uh, and here's why. Yeah. And we are good. We're we have an awesome awesome province. So, okay, this question comes from, and I'm sorry, it's Mar Margie, I, I believe. Sorry if I mispronounced that. But Ken, how will you reverse the damage that has been done to our school system by by the government? So thanks for the question. Well, I don't think there's been any damage done whatsoever. I think that there's more work to do, that there's improvements that can be made. And uh, when I look at the hundreds of more teachers here, and, and, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm very, very proud of the fact. The wonderful new schools that we have in, in, in you know, my constituency, for example, and, and, and others are, are around the province. I, I think, uh, you know, we have a wonderful education system. Is there more work to do? Absolutely. How are we going to do it? by respecting teachers, by bringing teachers and educators and school board trustees and parents and students together. And, uh, and uh, you know, if I'm elected premier, that the, the cabinet committee on the child, I think, is something that uh, the province is, is ready for. So I'm pretty excited about the future. Okay, thanks for the question. Okay, we're gonna go to our last prepared question. It's uh, coming from a city count, Regina City Councilor, Andrew Stevens. So let's see what Andrew has to say. If you could do one thing today, and cost was not an issue, to improve the K-12 system, what would it be? So if cost was no issue. Yeah, that's a little bit of a genie in a bottle here, a little bit of a dream, <laughs> but uh, I, I know Andrew and I know how passionate he is about uh, education and uh, I think he's doing a great job on City Council in, in Regina. Um, I, I guess I, I would want a specialized program for every student if I could, you know, if you could do that that one-on-one -on -one and. And, and, and I know it's just, it's a bit of a dream, but uh, I, I think if you, can, if you can challenge and if you can have those, those programs one-on-one uh, uh, -on -one and that would take care of special needs, that would take care of the very gifted, uh, and then that would uh, work with the passions that, that, that students uh, have as, as well. And, you know, I think that's something that, you know, when you get into post-secondary, you're, you're able to do that a little bit more to specialize, and then you see some people blossom because of that. And I think if we were able to do that earlier, um, you know, that would be my passion, my, my dream. Well, I give credit to our teachers that you have 30 students in there, and you, you can help blossom all those yeah. students, but it's, it's, it's got to be a tough job, and it's, yeah. With, with, yeah, and it, I give credit to, to teachers You know what I'm, I'm very proud of, though? My mom was a teacher, my, uh, my uncle Nick, he, uh, um, he was the, he, the, they named the, the um, library at Robert Usher Collegiate uh, after him because he oh, spent cool. his career uh, teaching in, in Regina here, but what I'm very proud of is some of my best friends today are my teachers from from 30 years ago That's and 35 years ago and uh, you know they uh, they continue to inspire me and uh, I hear from them when I'm uh, you know doing things like like running for premier they say hey Ken we're proud of you and that's uh, that means a lot, and that's the way they, they taught me, and that's the way they've continued to teach hundreds of, of kids. Yeah, it's funny how those, those teachers stick with you, and they, they mold and shape you. And it's well, when you think about it, okay, who has the most influence on you in your life? Your parents, of course, and grandparents and family, but 
you know, close yeah. behind are, are teachers yeah. that, that in, inspire, you know. I, my son is um, he, he's a Husky athlete. He went to the Canada Summer Games this year. You know, my daughter uh, is a, a swimmer who just you know, came back from uh, an international competition. And it, you look at it, it's teachers that have inspired them along the way to say, or they recognized a little bit of an interest or a little bit of a talent, and then they, they say, go for it. That's you cool. know, and that's so important, I so, think. Thank you for all you do, teachers that are listening Ab absolutely. out there. Absolutely. Okay, well, it's been, a, it's been a slice, and I, I appreciate the time, Ken, and I thank you for talking about education and and committing to keep talking about education. Well, Adam, you know, we talk about innovation, and here you are as a, as a school board trustee taking innovation to the next level and <laughs> saying, hey, there's a leadership campaign going on in both parties. Let's give them an opportunity to, uh, to interact with people. You're using technology. You've got uh, uh, your wife here with you helping out, so <laughs> thank you to, to her as well. And, uh, and thank you to the people who have taken time to, uh, you know, to really get to know us as candidates and to learn a little bit about our, our passion for education. Yeah. Okay, thanks everybody, and uh, talk to you soon. I want to thank you again for tuning in, and it's important to make your voice heard. One way to do that is to vote. The deadlines are a little different for each party. The SAS Party Leadership Convention is January 27th, 2018 at Prairie Land Park in Saskatoon. However, the deadline to purchase a membership and to be able to vote for your new party leader is December 8th, 2017. And the NDP Leadership Convention is March 3rd, 2018 at the Delta Hotel in Regina. The deadline to purchase a membership is January 19th, 2018. I would like to encourage you to share this post, hashtag it Premier Education, and make sure you click that you like the post as well. I want to further encourage you that if you found this valuable, like the at Adam Hicks Regina School Board page. Click on the like button. You can also ensure that you get new notifications coming up. Uh, so notifications for new videos, you click on following, you click on see first, and you click on on events and all live videos. So next time we have a live video, that'll be the first thing you'll see is when we're tuning in with a, a new candidate. Thanks a lot. Take care. The Premier Education Campaign is created by Adam Hicks trustee of the Regina Board of Education. The opinions expressed in this project do not necessarily reflect those of the Board of Education or Regina Public Schools.